Okay, welcome back everyone. We're live here in theCUBE in Las Vegas. For AWS reInvent 2021, I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE. We're in person this year. It's a hybrid event, online, great action going on. I'm with Rolo Patak, Vice President of AWS Analytics at AWS. Great to see you, thanks for coming on. It's great to be here, John. Thanks for having me again. Um, so you've got a really awesome job. You've got serverless, you've got analytics. You're in the, in the middle of all the action for AWS. What's the big news? What are you guys announcing? What's going on? Yeah, well it's been an awesome reInvent for us. Uh, we've had a uh, number of serverless analytics launches, so Redshift, our petabyte scale data warehouse, EMR for open source analytics, uh, and then we've also had uh, managed streaming for Kafka go serverless, and then on-demand for Kinesis. And then a couple of other big ones, uh, we've got row and cell-based security for AWS lake formation, so you can get really fine-grained controls over your data lakes and then uh, acid transactions, so you can actually have uh, inserts, updates, and deletes on data lakes, which is uh, a big step forward. Uh, I saw Swami on stage in the keynote, he's actually finishing up now, but even last night, I saw him in the hallway, we were talking about, it's not just about AI, of course, he's got the AI title, but AI is the outcome, it's the application of all the data, and, there's, and a new architecture, he said on stage just now, like, hey, it's not about the old databases from the 90s. Right. There's multiple data stores now available, and there's you've got the unification's the big trend. And he said something interesting, governance can be an advantage, not an That's inhibitor. Right. This is kind of this new horizontally scalable um, kind of idea that enables the vertical specialization around machine learning to be effective. It's not a new architecture, but it's now becoming more popular, people are realizing it. That's can right. you share your thoughts on this whole, not shift, but the acceleration of horizontally scalable and vertically integrated? Yeah. No, and I think the way Swami put it is exactly right. What you want is the right tool for the right job, and you want to be able to deliver that to customers so you're not compromising on performance or functionality or scale. But then you want all of these to be interconnected so they're well integrated, you can stay in your favorite interface and take advantage of other technologies. So you can have things like Redshift integrated with SageMaker so you get analytics and machine learning. Uh, and then Swami's absolutely right, governance is actually an enabler of velocity. Once you've got the right guardrails in place, you can actually set people free because they can innovate. You don't have to be in the way, but you know that your data is protected, it's being used in the way that you expect by the people that you are allowing to use that data. And so it becomes a very powerful way uh, for customers to set data free. And then because things are elastic and serverless, uh, you can really just match capacity with demand. And so as you see spikes in usage, the system can scale out. As those dwindle, they can scale back down and uh, it just becomes a very efficient way for customers to operate with data at scale. Every year at reInvent, it's always kind of like a pinch me moment. It's like, well, more, that's really good technology. Oh my God, it's getting easier and easier. As the infrastructure as code becomes more programmable, it's becoming easier. More Lambda, more serverless action. Uh, you got new offerings. How are customers benefiting, for instance, from the three new offerings that you guys announced here? What is specifically is the value proposition that you guys are, are putting out there? Yeah, so the big one is that, um, you know, as we've tried to do with AWS over the years, customers get to focus on the things that really differentiate them and differentiate their businesses. So we take away, uh, say in Redshift Serverless, for example, all of the uh, work that's needed to manage clusters, provision them, scale them, optimize them, uh, and that's all been automated and made invisible to customers. So customers just think about data, what they want to do with it, what insights they can derive from it, and they know they're getting the most efficient infrastructure possible to make that uh, a reality for them uh, with high performance and low cost. So uh, better results, more ability to focus on what differentiates their business, and lower cost structure over time. Yeah, I had the Accenture guys on, it's interesting, they had brought this whole cloud continuum, which is their word for what Adam was saying is clouds everywhere. And they're saying it's faster to match what you want to do with the outcomes, the, del the capabilities and outcomes kind of merging together, where it's easier to say, this is what we want to do, and here's the outcome it supports. That's right. With that, what are some of the key trends on those outcomes that you see with the data analytics that's most popular right now, and kind of where is that, where is that going? Yeah, I mean, I think what we've seen is that uh, data is just becoming more and more critical and top of mind for customers, and uh, you know, the pandemic has also accelerated that. We found that customers are really looking to data and analytics and machine learning to find new opportunities. How can they uh, really expand their business, take advantage of what's happening? And then the other part is, how can they find efficiencies? And so, um, really, everything that we're trying to do is we're trying to connect it to business outcomes for customers. How can you deepen your relationship with your customers? How can you create new customer experiences? And how can you do that more efficiently uh, with more agility and take advantage of uh, the ability to be flexible in you know, what is a very unpredictable world as we've seen? I know there's a lot of purpose-built discussion going on in the keynote with Swami as well. 
How are you creating this next layer of what I call purpose-built platform-like features? I mean, tools are great. We see a lot of tools in the data market. Tools are tools. If you're a hammer, you want to look for a nail. We've seen people overbuy too many tools and you have ultimately a platform. But there seems to be a new trend where this, this connect phenomenon was showing me that you got these platform capabilities that people can build on top of it because there's a huge ecosystem of data tools out there. That's right. That you guys have as partners that want to snap together. So the trend is things are starting to snap together. Less primitive, roll your own, which you can do. That's right. But there's now more easier ways. Take me through that. To explain that, unpack that, that phenomenon of rolling your own primitives, which has been the way. Now to, here, here's, here's some prefabricated software, go. Yeah. Um, so it's a great observation, John, and you're absolutely right. I mean, I think there's some customers that want to roll their own and they'll start with instances, they'll install software, they'll write their own code, build their own bespoke systems, and, uh, and we provide what customers need to do that. But I think increasingly you're starting to see these higher level abstractions that take away all of that detail, and Mark, as Adam put it, and allow customers to compose these. And we think it's important when you do that to, to be modular, so customers don't have to have these big bang, all or nothing approaches. You can pick what's appropriate. Uh, but you're never on a dead end. You can always evolve and scale as you need to. And then you want to bring these ideas of unified governance and cohesive interfaces across so that customers find it easy to adopt the next thing. And so you can start off, say, with batch analytics. You can expand into real time. You can bring in machine learning and predictive capabilities. You can add a natural language. And it's a big ecosystem of managed services as well as um, third parties and partners. And what's interesting, I want to get your thoughts while I got you here because I think this is such an important trend and historic moment in time. Jerry Chen, who's one of the smartest VCs that we know from Greylock who coined Castles in the Cloud, which kind of came out of a CUBE conversation uh, here on the CUBE years ago where we saw the movement of that someone's going to build real value on AWS, not just an app. And you see the rise of the snowflakes, the Databricks and other companies. And he was pointing out that you can get a very narrow wedge and get a position with these platforms, build on top of them, and then build value. And I think that's uh, uh, the number one question people ask me. It's like, okay, how do I build value on top of these analytic packages? So if I'm a, a startup or I'm a big company, I also want to leverage the, these yep. high level abstractions and build on top of it. How do you talk about that? How do you explain that? Because that's what people kind of want to know. It's like, okay, is it enabling me or do I have to fend for myself later? This kind of comes up a lot. No, it's, it's a great question. And um, you know, if you saw uh, Goldman's announcement uh, this week, which is about bringing, building their cloud on top of AWS, it's a great example of using our capabilities in terms of infrastructure and analytics and machine learning uh, to really allow them to take what's value added about Goldman and their position in the financial markets uh, to build something value add and create a ton of value for Goldman uh, by leveraging the yeah. things that we offer. And to us, that's an ideal outcome because it's a win-win for us and yeah. Goldman, but it's also a win for Goldman and their customers. That's what we call the super cloud, that's the opportunity. So is there a lot of Goldman's opportunities out there? Is that just uh, these unicorns, are these like, I mean, how do you, I mean, that, that's Goldman Sachs, they're huge. Is there, is this open to everybody? Absolutely, I mean, that's been one of the, uh, you know, one of the core ideas behind AWS was we wanted to give anybody, any developer, access to the same technology that the world's largest corporations had, and uh, that's what you have today. The things that Goldman uses to build that cloud are available to anybody, and you can start for a few pennies and scale up uh, you know, into the petabytes and beyond. When I was talking to Adam Slevsky when I met with him prior to reInvent, I noticed that he was definitely had an affinity towards the data. Obviously, he's Amazonian, but he spent some time at Tableau, so, right. so as he's running that company. So you see that kind of mindset of the data advantage. So I have to ask you, because it's something that I've been talking about for a while, and I'm waiting for it to emerge, but it, I'm not sure it's going to happen yet, but what infrastructure as code was for DevOps and then DevSecOps, there's almost like a data ops developing where data as code or programmable data, if I can connect the dots of what Swami's saying, what you're doing is, this is like a new horizontal layer of data, of freely available data, with some government governance built in. That's right. So it's, data's being baked into everything. So data's an ingredient, not a query to some database. It's got to be baked into the apps. That's data as code. That's right. So it's almost a data DevOps kind of vibe. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. And you know, you've seen it with things like MLOps and so on. It's all the special case of DevOps, but what you're really trying to do is to get programmatic and systematic about how you deal with data. And it's not just data that you have, it's also publicly available data sets, and it's uh, customers sharing with each other. Uh, so building this ecosystem about data, and we've got things like 
our open data program where we've got publicly hosted data sets or things like the AWS Data Exchange where customers can actually monetize data. So it's not just data as code, but now data as, as a monetizable asset. So uh, it's a really exciting time to be in the data business. For yeah, sure. and, I, and I think it's just so many tools. So I got to ask you while I got you here since you're an expert. Um, okay, here's my problem. I have a lot of data, I'm nervous about it, I want to secure it, so if I try to secure it, I'm not making it available. So I want to feed the machine learning. How do I create an architecture where I can make it freely available, but yet maintain the control and the comfort that this is going to be secure? Yes. Yeah, so which, which products uh, do I buy? Yeah, so uh, you know, great place to start at S3. Um, you know, it's one of the best places for data lakes uh, for all the reasons that Swami talked about, durability, scale, cost. You can then use lake formation to really protect and govern that data, so you can decide who's allowed to see it, what they're allowed to see, and you don't have to create multiple copies, so you can define that you know, this group of partners can see A, B, and C, this group can see D, E, and F, and the system enforces that, and you have a central point of control where you can monitor what's happening, and if you want to change your mind, you can do that instantly, and all access can be locked down. Uh, you've got a variety of encryption capabilities with things like KMS, and so you can really lock down your data, but yet keep it open to the parties that you want, and give them specifically the access that you want to give them. And then once you've done that, they're free to use that data according to the rules that you've defined with the analytics tools that we offer to go drive value, create insight, and, uh, and do something remarkable. So that's lake formation, and then you got Athena querying it, so you got all kinds of tooling on top of it. That's right, you can have uh, Athena querying your data in S3, lake formation protecting it, and then SageMaker's integrated with Athena, so you can pull that data into SageMaker for machine learning, interrogate that data using natural language with things like QuickSight Q, uh, like we demoed, so just a ton of power uh, without having to really think too deeply about uh, developing expert skill sets in those tools. So the next question I want to ask you is, because that first part of the great, great, great description, thank you very much. Now 5G and the edge is here. Outpost, how is the analytics going on that as edge becomes more pervasive in the architecture? Yeah, it's, it's going to be a key part of this ecosystem and it's really a continuum, so uh, you know, we find customers are collecting data at the edge, they might be making local ML or inference type decisions on edge devices or in, you know, automobiles for example. Uh, but typically that data at some point will come back into the cloud, into S3, it will be used to do heavy duty training and then those models get pushed back out to the edge. And then some of the things that we've done in Athena, for example, with federated query, uh, as long as you have a network path and you can understand what the data format or the database is, you can actually run a query on that data so you can run real-time queries on data wherever it lives, whether it's on an edge device, on an outpost, in a local zone, or in your cloud region, and combine all of that together in one place. Yeah, and I think having that data copies everywhere is a big thing, deal. I got to ask you, now that we're here at reInvent, what's your take? We're back in person, last year was all virtual. Finally, it's not 60,000 people like a couple years ago, still 27,000 people here. Yeah. All lining up for the sessions, all having a great time, um, all good. What's the most important story from your, your area that people should pay attention to? What's the headline? What's the top news? What should people pay attention to? Yeah, so I think first off, it is awesome to be back in person. Uh, it's just so fun to see customers uh, and to see, I mean, you. Like, we've been yeah. meeting here over the years and it's, it's great, there's so much energy in person. It's been really nice. Uh, you know, I think from an analytics perspective, there's just been a ton of innovation. I think the core idea for us is we want to make it easy for customers to use the right tool for the right job, to get insight from all of their data as cost effectively as possible. And I think, uh, you know, I think if customers walk away and think about it as being, it's now easier than ever for me to take advantage of everything that AWS has to offer, uh, to make sense of all the data that I'm generating and use it to drive business value, then I think we'll have done our jobs right. What's the coolest thing that you're seeing here? Is it the serverless innovation? Is it um, the new abstraction layer with data high level services, in your mind, what's the coolest uh, thing? And it's, it's hard to pick the coolest. <laughs> that's, pick three. It's like pick, a kit in the candy cool store. Things. I mean, I, I think the, uh, you know, the continued innovation in terms of uh, performance and functionality in each of our services is a big deal. I think serverless is a game changer yeah. for customers. Uh, and then I think really the infusion of machine learning throughout all of these systems. So uh, things like Redshift ML, Athena ML, QuickSight Q, uh, just really enabling new experiences for customers uh, in a way that's easier than it ever has been. And I think that's a, that's a big deal and uh, I'm really excited to see what customers do with it. Yeah, and I think the performance thing, to me the coolest thing that I'm seeing is the Graviton 3 and the Graviton progression with the custom stacks, oh, yeah. with all this ease of use, is just going to be just a real performance advantage. And the, and the costs are getting lower, so I think the EC2 instances around 
the compute is phenomenal. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think the hardware and silicon innovation is huge, and it's not just performance, it's also the energy efficiency. It's a big deal for the future. You know, we're at an inflection point where this modern applications are being built, and in my history, I'm old, my birthday's today, I'm in my 50s, so I remember back in the 80s, Every major inflection point, when there was a shift in how things were developed from mainframe client server, PC, internet work, you name it. Every time the apps changed, the app owners, app developers, all went to the best platform, processing. And so I think you know, that idea of system software applications being bundled together um, is a losing formula. I think you got to have that decoupling large scale. We're seeing that with cloud, and I think now, if I'm an app developer, whether, whether I'm in a large ISV in your ecosystem or in the APN partner or a startup, I'm going to go where my software runs the best, period. And where I can create value. That's right. I get distribution, I create value, and it runs fast. There I mean, you go. That's, that, that's that doesn't cost wants. me a lot. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty simple. So I think the ecosystem's going to be a big action for the next couple years. Yep. Absolutely right, and um, I mean the ecosystem's huge, and I think, um, and we're also grateful to have all these partners here. It's a huge deal for us, and I think it really matters for customers. What's on your roadmap this year? What do you got going on? Can you share a little bit of uh, trajectory without kind of uh, breaking the rules of the Amazonian uh, <laughs> confidentiality? Um, um, what's what's the focus for the year? What do you, what's next? Well, you know, as you know, we're always talking to customers, and uh, I think we're going to make things better, faster, cheaper, easier to use, and. Um, I think you've seen some of the things that we're doing with integration, and you'll see more of that. And uh, really the goal is, how can customers get value as quickly as possible for as low cost as possible? That's yeah. how we win together in the long term. And yeah, we always say every time we see each other, data is at the center of the value proposition. I've been saying that for 10 years. Now it's actually the value proposition powering AI, and you're seeing, because of it, the rise of super clouds. And then these super clouds are emerging, and I think you guys are the underpinnings of these emerging super clouds. And so it's a huge trend. I think the Goldman Sachs thing is a validation. So again, more data, the better That's right. cool things happening. It is just, it's everywhere. And the, uh, the diversity of use cases is amazing. I mean, I think from you know, the Australia swimming team to, uh, to Formula One to NASDAQ, it's just incredible to Can't see what our customers are doing. Can't wait to see the great route. Great to see you. Thanks for coming on theCUBE. Thanks Pleasure to be here as always, John. Great to see you, thank yeah, you. Yeah, thanks for, thanks for sharing. All the data is the key to the success. Data is the value proposition. You're seeing the rise of super clouds because of the data advantage. If you can expose it, protect it, govern it, it unleashes creativity and opportunities for entrepreneurs and businesses, of course. You got to have the scale and the price performance. That's what Amazon's doing. It's the Cube coverage. You're watching the leader in worldwide tech coverage here in person for AWS reInvent 2021. I'm John Furrier, thanks for watching.